Alright, okay, so hello dears. <laughs> so hello good day, no, hello, hello, and um welcome to a pre-recorded lecture, no. Um actually this was supposed to be parang introduced earlier to you guys, no, uh, to you dears. Um supposed to be during um examination of stool uh, specimens, but uh microscope examination I mean. Uh, but I forgot about this. And I didn't think that it would be important, no. But um your Zybig na book, yes, um in parasitology has a chapter dedicated for this talaga, which is artifacts and your confusers during your examination, both in stool and even um in your um blood um samples. So that's why I included this, no, so that you will know, okay, uh since of course this is very important since you'll be med tech soon, of course, you'll be practicing the f uh if you especially if you practice in the field of medical technology <coughs> excuse me. So you are going to encounter a lot of specimens, especially in um clinical microscopy, uh which is again fused with parasitology in a section. So you you will get to um experience a lot or encounter a lot of stool samples or blood samples for you to examine. So um at least now no um you already know what are the real parasites, no? What are the real eggs? How how do they look like? Uh sino talaga yung totoo? Char. Okay. Who are the real ones? No. Can say mga true friends, chat. So <laughs> who are the real parasites? Uh what do they look like versus or uh, against, no? In comparison to those that are just again artifacts or your confusers. So mga pa as if, no, nagpapa as if na parasites pero Hindi pala. Okay, so feelers sila yan. Okay, all right. So they are mga catfishing. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyway, so again, this is um artifacts and um confusers. Okay, so this is a short discussion, hopefully, on the artifacts and confusers. All right. So what are artifacts and confusers? As I mentioned, these are structures that are that can be found in your specimen. Again, uh, mostly in your stool and blood samples that may mimic, okay, or that may look like parasites. But in re in reality, they are not parasites. Okay, so um yeah, basically no the name itself artifacts. So artifacts lang. So parang mga um mga um apil apil ra ba naka apil ra or like again artifacts or confusers. But the name itself confusers because it can make you confused. No, it can uh. Ha um, uh, it could make your examination difficult because you are confused. <laughs> because, like, what is this uh, structure that I see? Is is this um, like a real parasite or is is it just an artifact? Ganon. So whenever you see something like in your specimens or stool samples, blood samples, when you see a structure that you feel like it's not a parasite or it's not really a parasite or it's not something significant ayan we term that as our, an artifact okay so ayan so you already know that these are artifacts this is a term that's commonly used um in the laboratory no uh, especially when you um work as a med tech no so at least now you already know what are artifacts okay so again not only in stool samples or blood samples but even other um samples and even also in other sections in the laboratory there could be a lot of artifacts okay so but generally whatever section you may be in or whatever sample you may receive the meaning is still the same when we say artifacts these are structures that of that are really not significant uh, for the diagnosis of uh, the patient no and uh, these can only make you confused again confusers this these could only uh, make your examination difficult of the samples okay but again at the end of the day they are not significant okay they are normally found in stool lung or in your samples but again they do not point to a disease or they they are not the causative agent of the disease all right or of the symptoms that the patient is experiencing all right so daming chica okay so that that is for your artifacts. Now, these artifacts, uh, especially in the stool, may be brought about by a, a result of disease processes. Okay, so again, um, they could be a product lang of disease, but again, it's not something or it's these are not structures that can really say that, ah, okay, these are the causative agents of your disease. No, maybe uh, results lang, okay, but not the main um, reason as to why the patient is having the disease or is... Um, uh, why the patient is having these symptoms okay so again maybe a result of disease processes medications yes and even dietary habits okay so again so when you go to your third year um 
in AUBF analysis of urine body fluids, you will also know um, there are could be a lot of artifacts then in your urine. Okay, urine specimen. So, yeah, similar here with your stool samples. Again, they could be um, a result of disease processes. Again, result lang, not the main cause talaga of the disease. A product of your medications. Again, mga breakdown products from your medications or from the medications that the patient is taking. And or dietary habits from the food that they eat. Okay, so especially that, diba, um, from the food that we eat, uh, the food that we eat um, is a wide range of food. There could be a lot of variety of food that we eat, especially from... Um, uh, coming from plants, animals, and even a lot of other sources. So these food could also contribute artifacts and confusers. Okay, all right. Now, um, another possible source of your artifacts are your free-living organisms uh, that could have been introduced to the stool when um, the stool was exposed to a example water, sewage, or soil. Okay, because again, your soil, sewage, and water can have a lot of free living organisms they could also have a lot of parasites that cannot affect man okay or like parasites that are not really of human um importance okay not really parasites that really do not cause any disease to humans but uh, they are free living right? they're free living in the environment and in cases na contaminate in cases when your stool samples are contaminated with these um with water, with sewage, or even soil, then it can introduce um, artifacts or confusers that could, again, uh, make you uh, confused <laughs> or that could make you, um, uh, yeah, it make that can make your examination difficult. All right. Okay. And um, artifacts and confusers, when we go to your blood samples, uh, they could be uh, your stain precipitate, uh, precipitate, yeah, stain precipitate. Uh, so these are like um, during staining, no? Uh, during staining process, there are a lot of precipitates from the stain itself, okay? So, but again, they do not, they are not significant, all right? Could be um, RBC abnormalities. Yes, these are now significant, okay? In terms of hematology. When we talk about hematology, these red blood cell abnormalities, Howell Jolly Bodies example, these are important in your <laughs> hematology. But for parasitology, they are not significant <laughs> in, our, um, in our class. No, but in a way, siguro you could still point Example: Howell Jolly bodies can be seen can be seen in megaloblastic anemia. Okay, and megaloblastic anemia, if you can recall, uh, this is the anemia that your diphilobothrium or dibothriocephalus latus causes, diba? So, in a way, it can point to it. <laughs> Pero generally, no, your RBC abnormalities, unless na siguro if um, your R R RBC abnormalities, example mga Howell Jolly bodies. Um, etc. You will know that in your hematology, hematology in third year, first sem, you will know the different abnormalities, different inclusions, okay? The different parang mga intracellular uh, materials or structures that an RBC can have, okay? And the various diseases that these abnormalities may point to, okay? Again, uh, the abno uh, RBC abnormalities are important in your hematology, but for parasitology, not so much, okay? <laughs> All right. And even clumping of platelets. Uh, which again can make your examination difficult or can make you um, identify, misidentify a parasite because of the clumping of platelets. Uh, they can also be noted in your or on your blood smears. Okay, all right. And accidental ingestion of parasite forms in which humans are not part of their life cycle may also yield confusers. So, example, um, there are parasites that could that are really for animals, no, that have been accidentally ingested by humans, uh, or mga like example eggs of mites. Later we'll uh, look into that, de ba? Uh, there are a lot, no. So these parasite forms are not um, of human importance or are not important to uh, important in causing diseases to humans, but they are accidentally ingested and again can contribute to becoming an artifact or confuser. So generally, again, what is the importance of um, knowing these artifacts and confusers is because we don't want to misdiagnose a patient. Okay, we want to make sure we want to make certain that. The parasite or the structures that we are seeing under the stool samples or other or under any other samples are really uh, the parasite, okay, that is really causing the disease of the patient. Okay, it's not an artifact, it's not a confuser. All right. So that's the ultimate goal of us med techs, no? Um, that we know how to distinguish between the artifact, the uh, the fake, <laughs> the ano lang, the doppelganger charot, the fake, no, <laughs> the insignificant one between uh we want to know again it's our goal as med techs to determine again or to distinguish between the real parasite eggs bar larva okay versus 
the fake, okay, the unoriginal, and the insignificant among artifacts or confusers. All right? Why? Because again, we want to make sure that we do not misdiagnose, and also we don't want to um, misdiagnose, as I mentioned, and we don't want that we we give false results okay so like you you may be thinking now ah, okay this is an artifact okay so you examine artifact but then for you it was a hookworm egg so the patient is misdiagnosed with a hookworm infection okay or in another scenario you considered this structure as an artifact but in reality it was a an egg of a parasite right? so it you have two scenarios um, that could result from not identifying or from not knowing which is an artifact and a parasite. And both scenarios lead to um, misdiagnosis and um, <laughs> the probable um, uh, uh, bad prognosis all right, of the patient. All right? Okay, so that's the importance. Again, we want to make sure that we do not misdiagnose and we don't um, let the patient yeah, misdiagnosed again. <laughs> All right, again. So that's for your um, introduction. Okay, now we go on to the different artifacts that we can see in your sample. So most of these are focusing on your stool samples, and then the later part are the artifacts that can be seen in your blood samples. All right, and for the stool samples, we start first with your WBCs, your white blood cells. Your white blood cells are also known as your polymorphonuclear white blood cells. Actually, uh, this in uh, okay. So <laughs> in um. In acronym, this is your PMNs. Okay, okay. PMNs. All right, PMNs. Okay, so PMNs are your polymorphonuclear. So poly, P, M, and nuclear. And usually these polymorphonuclears are your neutrophils. Okay, all right. Neutrophils. Okay. So these are your, usually when we say PMNs, we usually refer to your uh, neutrophils okay all right so and these neutrophils no if you can recall the the um, appearance of a neutrophil no uh, based on your um, hemato hematology sorry <laughs> in your um, um, intro to medtech ba or his his diba your neutrophil may be mistaken as an amoebic cyst especially those of entamoeba histolytica for the sizes no um, in terms of micrometers there are they actually um, close ang ilang sizes. Okay? So, um, that's why it's very difficult or it can be a challenge to differentiate between a PMNs or your WBCs, neutrophils, uh, between differentiate uh, WBCs from, again, your amoebic cysts. All right. But for your WBCs, again, they are usually present in patients suffering from ulcerative colitis, bacterial dysentery, or intestinal amoebiasis. All right. So, Obviously, when there is an infection in the body, your neutrophils are increased uh, depending on uh, depending on origin. Diba? And usually, neutrophils are increased and infections caused by bacteria. Yes, so <clears throat> ako na na answer okay? <laughs> infections caused by bacteria, diba? neutrophils are increased. All right, so for example, ulcerative colitis, yes, bacterial dysentery or intestinal amoebiasis, yes, uh, the WBCs, again, these are infections. So, of course, your WBCs will also be increased. And these WBCs, of course, because they are increased, they can also be recovered in your stool. Now, with these WBCs, ilang appearance or their appearance, they have a 2 to 4 lobed nucleus, which again, similar in appearance pa rin to the etamoeba histolytica nucleus, but they are connected by a thin chromatin bands, ang WBC na mga nuclei. All right? Recall, di ba, for entamoeba histolytica cysts, the mature um, entamoeba histolytica cysts may contain up to four nuclei. All right? So, uh, for the WBCs, and <laughs> for the WBCs, they can also have four lobed nucleus. So, meaning, uh, for um, entamoeba histolytica, ang cysts sa entamoeba histolytica, they have four separate nuclei. Okay? But for for WBCs, their nuclei are f lobed, meaning it has lobes. Meaning it has, example, it has like one big nucleus, pero it has a lot of lobes. Parang ganun. Alright? Okay. Parang basos yung nindyo, no? <laughs> okay, so lobes, meaning there are a lot of parang mga separated na mga compartments in a way of the nucleus. And these lobes are connected by your thin chromatin bands. Okay, and that's the difference between your WBCs and the entamoeba histolytica na nucleus or yeah, the nucleus of the cysts. All right. Now, your protozoan nuclear inclusions, of course, such as your karyosomes, peripheral chromatin, are, of course, absent in your WBCs. Again, one of the differences of your WBCs from your amoebic cysts. Your mononuclear WBCs, again, another type of WBCs. And usually, when we say mononuclear, I sorry. 
Sorry. <laughs> mali, mali yung napindot ko. But anyway, when you say mononuclears, again, these are usually referring to your macrophages or monocytes. So when you say mononuclear, they only have one nucleus. Okay? So, um, by the name itself, mononuclear. Ayan. Or usually, dili lobed lang nucleus. Alright? So, macrophages or monocytes. And they may resemble your entamoeba hesolytica trophozoite this time. But they may be similar, uh, may be smaller in size. Okay? Compared to your trophozoites. The macrophage also has one irregularly shaped nucleus that is often absent on examination. And there are some red staining round bodies that can be seen in your macrophages that are absent in your trophozoite. So these are some of the defining features that we can look into in differentiating or in identifying what is a WBC, what is a PMN or a mononuclears versus what is an amoebic cyst or an amoebic trophozoite. Alright, so let's look at some pictures. Ayan. So this is an example of your polymorphonuclears no? or your WBCs. Again, usually your neutrophils. Diba? Um, as you can see, diba, these are the nucleus and as you can see, medyo marami. One, two, one, two, and. And as you can see here, this is parang a thin chromatin band. It's not that uh, visible, all right. But uh, this is the chromatin band that connects the two lobes of the nucleus, all right. So that's for a WBC. Whereas for a cyst, as you can see, the cyst really has a parang uh, a complete circle na shape compared to your uh, WBCs, diba? For WBCs, it's quite um, irregular ang outer uh, shape niya. And as you can see, then if you can clearly see here, this is the karyosome of your um, cyst as you can see and there is an outer uh, nucleus diba so parang na, may may central central talaga siya na parang uh, structure okay this is what you look for in a cyst and of course there are some intra nucle intracellular inclusions <laughs> inclusions example your karyoso are your chromatoidal bodies diba all right where which um, your wbcs do not have okay so you could also look um, at that and aside from that you could also perform iodine staining diba the antonis method because these are uh, this method is very useful in the visualization of cysts because they stain your glycogen body diba which um, can really help in identifying the cyst. Okay, all right. So that's for the polymorphonuclears versus your entamoeba hislytica na cyst. Okay, all right. So as you can see again, very perfect, medyo almost perfect and very smooth ang outer covering. Whereas for WBCs, it's quite irregular. It's not the perfect sphere or the circle talaga. All right. And for the nuclei, again, it could be um, a lot. Okay. Actually, ang cyst din naman. Pero again, there's a um, chromatin band that, that connects the lobes. Okay. All right, so that's for the PMNs, usually your neutrophils versus your entamoeba hislytica cyst. Okay, and of course, you have your macrophages, which is stained, diba? and your trophozoites. As you can see, diba, it's really, really similar in appearance. If ako mismo, I cannot. <laughs> it would be very difficult. But again, uh, diba, there are red, diba, red staining bodies. Uh, red, yeah, red staining bodies. And uh, they are quite smaller compared to your trophozoite. Diba? And your trophozoite is quite, again, um, irregular ang shape talaga sa trophozoite. Because again, diba, it's moving. Pseudopods are extending here and there para mo move. Okay. But for your uh, macrophages, as you can see, the shape is always uh, stable lang din naman. Okay. And again, it's smaller and there are red staining, ba uh, red staining bodies. Okay. So this is stained in, I think, trichrome. Yeah. Okay. All right. Macrophages and entamoeba hesolytica trophozoite. So those are for the WBCs. Uh, again, which could confuse you, especially for amoebic cysts and trophozoites. And I think it's one of the. Personally, if you're a beginner, uh, and ako mismo, I will admit, no, it can still be a challenge. Uh, it's one of the uh, most challenging, talaga, to distinguish um, WBCs from your amoebic cysts. Okay. But again, uh, look for mga defining characteristics of assists. Uh, your chromatoidal bodies, the karyosome, and aside from that, again, if it's still difficult, you stain that with iodine, okay, D. Antonis. Because again, through the iodine reagent in the D. Antonis method, it can visualize even better your amoebic cysts. Okay, all right. So that's for your WBCs. All right, okay, again. So if WBC is a stool, for urine naman, the first... Um, sediment or the first cell in urine that is very hard to identify is your RBC, your red blood cells. Ayan. So you'll know that in your AUBF. Uh, red blood cells is one of the, is the sediment talaga or the cells, that ca the cell that is found in urine that could be of a challenge, great challenge to um, 
beginners or to students. Okay, the red blood cells in urine. Okay, all right, ayan. All right, so may mga AUBF na na include. Okay, all right, so that's for the first artifact, which is your WBCs. Again, uh, a product of a disease. Okay, the the increased number of WBCs in your stool sample can be a product of disease, but again, it's not the cause of the disease. Okay, it's just a result of the disease. Okay, all right, ayan. Next, we go now to your pollen grains. Uh, your pollen grains, they are thick-walled and may resemble the eggs of Tania, but they are smaller. And aside from that, they can be round or symmetrically lobed. And um, unlike Tania, there are no inter internal structures, notable internal structures. So here's an example of a pollen grain. Ayan. So as you can see, diba? Um, for pollen grain, it can really look like a helminth egg. It can even look like um, an Ascaris egg, diba? Um, but compared to your Tania, as you can see, it's much bigger. And you, there is a process of, uh, there is a notable hooklets, this one. All right. Wait lang. Okay. Ayan. So this one, the hooklets, okay, compared to the internal structure of your pollen grain. Although there are still some structures there, but they are not really pointing to a hooklet, hooklets, or anything na notable no, for a parasite. Unlike your um, tenia. Okay. These are your hooklets, diba? Okay. All right. So that's for pollen grains. So how do we or when do we get pollen grains in your stool sample? Um, during mga, especially outside of the country, in other states, uh, I mean like in other countries, especially in the U.S., those that experience mga seasons, no? Um, so there are seasons that there are a lot of pollens, okay? All right. Um, I think even here in the Philippines, siguro din naman, when there is like, um, it's the time for mating for flowers or pollination when pollens are released in the air no so that could um, be contaminated or that could uh, land in the laboratory ba or in our stool sample so that's the possibility uh, that's a possible source of pollen grains in your stool samples okay all right Ayan. okay so that's for pollen grains again may look like um may look like tenia. Okay, but again, look at the interior structures. For tenia, there are, again, your hooklets inside. Okay, all right. Next, we go to your vegetable cells. Your vegetable cells still the same may be mistaken as helminth eggs. Uh, they are large, roundish oval, or irregularly round in shape. Thick cell walls are present, and the interior portion is unorganized, uh, which consists primarily of large vacuoles. So here's an example, diba? Right? So it's a vegetable cell. So as you can see, uh, large vacuoles, okay? So, unorganized, diba? So, parang di talaga siya clean, okay? Uh, it's not clean to look at, okay? But it may look or it may resemble like a fasciola egg, no? Or a trematode egg, no? Uh, compared to your decaninum egg packet, I should have put the eye, ano here, inside of decaninum fasciola. Yeah, I'll change this. A trematode egg. So, as you can see, again, large vacuoles. You can see the, these circles here, small circles. These are the vacuoles, no? And again, they are unorganized, meaning they are not really smooth in appearance, no? Alright, so they are like clump, uh, clump there together, all right, cramped together, no? So it's not that um, organized, okay? So this is a vegetable cell. Again, a product of digestion pa rin from the food that we eat, eat. Diba? Because again, we eat vegetables, so they could, and there are structures of the in the vegetables that we cannot digest, okay? Because we don't have the enzymes for it. So um, that's why there are some cells here that can appear, okay? Or other structures of vegetables that can appear. Okay, all right. So again, uh, I'll change the picture here para mas clear on oh, a trematode egg. Okay, so again, uh, large vacuoles inside, thick cell wall, but unorganized, ang large uh, vacuoles. Okay, all right. Next, another one is vegetable spirals. Now, these vegetable spirals, by the name itself, spiral in origin, uh, in appearance, and may resemble helminth larvae, okay, in their shape and size. But unlike helminth larvae, they do not have a head or a tail, okay? So, basically, a pure spiral lang, okay? And they have a ladder-like appearance with a series of rungs or meaning parang mga steps that are spaced closely together. So, this is an example of a spiral. As you can see, diba, spiral talaga siya. And then, the lines here, diba, it looks like a ladder, and its appearance is, of course, spiral, okay? But again, this is from a vegetable. Again, from the food that we eat, okay? All right, and as you can see, these are the lines. These are the rungs, R-U-N-G-S, rungs, the lines here. And again, they resemble like a larva. But again, lar uh, your vegetable spiral doesn't have a head, and it doesn't have a tail, okay? So it's just like uh, pure pag-end, like wala siyang, it doesn't like, it doesn't like, um, Similar to a head of a larva that like protrudes here and then a tail that's sharp like that. <laughs> what is that, Mark? But anyway, you get my point, diba? It doesn't have a head and it doesn't have a tail. It like, it ends 
um very abruptly in a way parang ganun okay ayan so the vegetable that's a vegetable spiral okay all right now we go now to your charcoal laden crystals ayan these charcoal laden crystals are considered to be the most significant out of all the confusers and artifacts why because these are a measure or anyway these uh indicate okay an an immune process brought about uh by a disease okay uh because your charcoal needle radon crystals are a eosinophil breakdown products and please take note na ako sa boards and not only in parasitology that you encounter this but also in other other um subjects in med tech okay your charcoal laden crystals basta ga, basta charcoal laden crystals these are eosinophil ayan eosinophil breakdown products and by if you can recall when is eosinophil increased diba usually during when man allergic reactions or even parasitic infections okay that's why if you see charcoal laden crystals in your stool samples then you need to examine the specimen clearly because again the presence of these crystals can indicate a disease okay it's not again the main cause of the disease but it can point to a disease okay it can point to a disease because it's a breakdown product of the eosinophils okay all right because again um eosinophils usually increase during allergic reactions or even during parasitic infections ayan ayan so these are your charcoal laden crystals so diamond shape diba looks like diamonds okay and diba usually in parasitic infection your eosinophils are increased diba parasitic infection and what antibody can you recall again what antibody is increased in parasitic infections it's your of course usually ig man ig E. Ayan. Please take note. IgE are, is the antibody that's usually increased in allergies and your parasitic infections. IgE. Okay. All right. So again, the presence of charcoal leading crystals can point, can indicate an immune response. So that's why specimens that uh, you see charcoal laden crystals, uh, charcoal laden crystals in, should be examined carefully, closely. Again, just to look as if there are like parasite eggs ba talaga or whatever that could cause the immune response that could have the, that could cause the immune response that led to the production of these charcoal laden charcoal laden crystals okay all right and please take note of these crystals ha lumalabas din sa other subjects ninyo okay maybe in AUBF or um hematology ba or clinical chemistry basta it, it it's all around okay all right now preso buzzer na dapat ang charcoal laden crystals okay all right next we go to your yeast not your no charot okay yeast diba your yeasts again are another type of microorganisms these are fungi a type of fungi all right um but because of their appearance your oval yeast cells can be mistaken as your protozoan cysts diba so you can see the size of your yeast are closely similar to the size of your entam entamoeba hartmanni, entamoeba nena, and even entamoeba hominis. All right, so they're close in size, so they could be mistaken um, in appearance or in identification. Uh, and aside from that, uh, a yeast cell can also resemble the oocyst of Cryptosporidium. All right, so very close on size, four to six, four to eight. Okay, and as with other artifacts, yeast cells they do not have definite internal structures, and um, However, there are small granules that can resemble karyosomes that can be seen in your yeast cells. And yeast, especially um, yeast, the uh, yeast, sorry, <laughs> yeast uh, cells can be very much easy to identify, especially during their budding stage. So when you say budding, this is parang in a way the birthing, okay, pagpanganak ng yeast, okay, because your yeast cells. Um, they usually have this. This is the mother. This is the mother yeast. And there is a small, ayan. This is a small, parang budding. Meaning parang pagawas, diba? It, it's like a small, uh, again. Ah! Oh, that looks bad. <laughs> okay. Parang ganun. Later na lang. <laughs> Mark, that's why I should stop drawing. Okay, anyway, it's a budding stage. So when you say budding, it's something that, uh, it's the process of parang birthing, no? Or like, producing a new younger yeast cell from the mother cell so later in the picture so this is the picture yeast cells ayan so as you can see these are your budding yeast i sorry so as you can see diba, these small ones here that's the younger or the baby na mga yeasts okay this one these small ones here diba? so as you can see they are connected to the mother okay the big uh, circle here is the mother yeast cell okay so as you can see but very easy to identify they're usually connected no one big and then one small because the smaller one this one the smaller one is 
the baby yeast cell that is coming out of the mother na yeast okay and the, and when we and what we call that is your budding yeast when we say bud diba bud it's like producing something new or like producing a younger um whatever diba so that's that's budding yeast so very easy to identify uh, usually that's another um characteristic of yeast cells you look for budding yeast usually when yeast cells are present there is always a budding yeast that is present okay all right so you look for these structures na parang there's a big circle mama mama yeast and then there's a baby yeast that's connected okay all right Ye- yeast and not a no yeast or yeast by twice Charot. okay all right Ayan. and these are antamoeba nana cysts as you can see again quite similar with your uh, yeast cells but again look at the internal structures the circle ones here are the karyosomes or the nuclei all right so and your internal structures of your yeasts usually cannot it's not definite okay it's not like you can really point to, ah okay this is the nucleus ah okay this is the karyosome parang ganun. okay and for cryptosporidium oocysts very difficult <laughs> so um in wet mounts very difficult to identify your oocysts of cryptosporidium but again recall cryptosporidium is a partially acid fast parasite so you have uh for easier no identification of these oocysts if you are if you are suspecting of cryptosporidiosis in a stool sample and you you see this okay the best thing to do next is to um stain diba you stain the sample using your modified acid fast okay recall why is it called modified acid fast nga it's because the modified acid fast procedure uses a weaker decolorizer 2% sulfuric acid ayan sana naman na remember ba? okay staining of fecal smears ganun okay all right so that's for the yeast cells okay yeast or yeast charot okay ayan ipush talaga mark next we have the plant hair again uh plant hair may resemble again helminth larvae and sizer shape but again, uh, plant hair may have a non-descript internal structure. Okay, so when you say again, um, okay, so again, it may have it. Okay, so meaning again, non-descript meaning again, it's not definite. Okay, it's not distinctive. Okay, so uh, yeah, so not definite uh, internal structure. All right, and again, upon further examination, they do not have diagnostic structures. Ang plant hair like your buccal region or cavity, esophagus, genital primordium, and especially head or tail na region. So here's an example. This is your plant hair, as you can see, de ba? This could look like a tail naman, pero here at the front, de ba? It's not um parang parang in a circle na parang it looks like a head. Okay, and again, the internal structures, as you can see, you cannot see an esophagus, you cannot see a genital primordium. Compared to your hookworm larvae, diba? as you can see, this is the esophagus, diba? as you can see, the buccal cavity. And usually, diba, the end here is quite soft because, or like, parang it's smooth, diba? it's not similar here na parang sharp ang pag end, but here it's quite smooth. This is the head, diba? and of course, pointed tail, hookworm larva. And the inside, as you can see, there are some internal structures that you can see there and especially this one this is the esophagus diba as you can see this one the esophagus diba okay diba so you can really see that's in, inside um there are internal structures there okay and usually when you see this in specimen hook mga larvae usually they are moving okay they're motile especially um if the specimen is fresh but if you preserved it already, mga preservation, stool preservation natin na mga techniques, then of course, these larva will not move anymore. Okay, so that will make it different to distinguish. But again, just look at the internal structures. Again, esophagus, medyo smooth ang end here because it's the head compared to this na parang sharp na abrupt, parang ganun. Okay, alright. And the tail, again, for hookworm larva is pointed, filariform. And for strongyloides, it's snotched, di ba? Ayan, alam, na na. alam nyo na yan. <laughs> di ba? Okay, alright. Ayan. So that's for plant hair. Okay, so again, where do we get this? From the food that we eat, uh, mga plant-based foods, of course. So, ayan. So that's the possible sources of plant hair. Okay, next is of course plant material so the same um then still still the same uh source from the food that we eat again may resemble helminth eggs particularly unfertilized ascaris lumbricoides so oblong in shape no pataas all right uh artifact is typically round to oval or may or may not have a definite cell wall they may also have hairs which are pseudocilia okay pseudo meaning false no pseudo uh, pseudocilia extending from its periphery and the interior same with your vegetable cell odd shaped vacuoles so here's an example of a plant material diba so this is iodine stained so as you can see diba, it looks like 
a parang helminth egg parang hookworm egg so in comparison this is a hookworm egg in iodine stain okay so for hookworm egg again always take note that there's an outer covering usually transparent okay and the inner is the developing embryo or the blastomeres the body developing parasite okay there's an outer um covering that's usually transparent usually for hookworm eggs okay all right that's for plant material okay all right i and that's for plant material again uh, maybe coming from the food that we eat okay all right next we're going to epithelial cells um epithelial cells of course are normal constituents of your stool because your stool comes from your intestines and your intestines are lined with epithelial cells they are made of epithelial cells all right so it's normal to recover epithelial cells in your stool samples okay all right now, epithelial cells again they often show striking resemblance to your amoebic trophozoites Okay. In addition, epithelial cells have a single nucleus and often have uh, show a distinct cell wall. All right. Same, similar with your trophozoites, but they lack again same interior structures with your amoebic trophozoites, and um, the large nucleus, however, of your epithelial cell may consist of a large chromatin mass that resembles a nucleus. All right. Aside from that, I forgot to mention for your yeast cells, when do we see yeast cells in your stool samples? There are some yeast cells that are normal flora, meaning they live normally in your intestines and they do not cause infection. Okay. But there are some cases of um, intense yeast infection, like there's a lot of yeast infection uh, or there's a lot of yeast cells that we can see in the stool sample. Now that could point to a to an infection. Okay. Yeast infection ba? Okay. Maybe your immune system is also deteriorating. Okay. So that your immune, so your immune system cannot fight off normal mga yeast infection. So that's why there are a lot of yeast cells in your stool sample. Okay, but again, there are some yeast cells that are normal flora. Okay, they live, they live, they live normal normally in your intestines, and they do not cause infection. Okay, all right, uh, yeah. So that's for epithelial. Uh, that's for the yeast cells, but I forgot to mention kanina. Sorry. All right, for epithelial cells, again, normal constituents of your stool. Again, usually they do not indicate any significance, any infection, because again, your intestines are made up of epithelial cells. And of course, epithelial cells are slowed, slowed off, okay, or removed from time to time from your intestines. And of course, they appear in your stool samples. Okay, so this is an example of an epithelial cell, and this is an example of an amoebic trophozoite. So as you can see, the cytoplasm is quite uh, bare, diba? It doesn't really look like it has a lot inside, okay? Compared to amoebic trophozoite, diba? It's usually parang there's still a lot going on there, <laughs> a lot of internal structures. And usually the outer periphery is quite smooth, diba? Ang shape talaga for epithelial cell is defined. Whereas for your amoebic trophozoite, diba? As you can see, it's still irregular. And still the same, your nucleus and your karyosome, diba? Parang there's a smaller circle in front, uh, at the center, okay? Para siyang mata, okay? But this is the karyosome. Okay, and your nucleus, parang ganun. Okay, so that's the difference between epithelial cell and your amoebic trophozoite. Okay, all right. Ayan. Now we go now to fungal elements. So these are mga, aside from yeast cells, could be mga molds or brought about by the environment, contamination. No, again, uh, mga spores. No, S P O R E. S P O R E S spores of fungi, okay, that could have contaminated from the environment into your stool samples. They may uh, be similar in appearance to your protozoan cysts, parin. And again, still the same with your artifacts, other artifacts and confusers. We look at the interior structures, okay, and they lack interior structures that are usually found in your parasites, uh, in your cysts or Ova. Okay, so here's an example of a fungal spore, diba? So again, fungal spore it could be again brought about by the environment. Alright. And this is your chylomastic mesnili cyst. So as you can see, by quite a same appearance. But look at the internal structure if you see mesnili, chylomastics. Diba? There parang you can see here the um, other internal structures. But here as you can see, it's quite bare. It doesn't really have what it's like palang nangyayari. <laughs> Para sa kami ng, para sa crush ko. Charot, walang nangyayari. Charot! Okay, alright. So, uh, inside, diba, it's like clean. It's not like something's really happening there, diba? Whereas for Chylomastics Mesnili, cyst, diba, it looks like um, there are still mga structures here. Like, this is the nucleus ba? This is the axo style? Whatever. Okay, now, Chylomastics Mesnili, diba, recall, this is the flagellate, intestinal flagellate that looks like a lemon, diba? Lemon-shaped cyst or nipple-shaped cyst. Ayan, ako, sana na-remember pa. Okay, lemon-shaped, nipple-shaped cyst, diba? And it has 
has a bird beak, bird's beak appearance. Nako, sana na-remember pa talaga. Oh my gosh. Okay, Calomastix, Miss Neely. One of my favorite na mga, actually my favorite flagellate, intestinal flagellate. Because of its lemon-shaped, nipple-shaped appearance na cyst. Okay, sana naman na-remember pa. Okay, alright. So that's for fungal elements. Okay. Now, we go now to the next, which are your starch cells. Again, where do we get starch cells? Still the same from the food that we eat or from the starch uh, powder in your gloves, okay? Uh, diba, some of your gloves are powdered, okay? Now, these powdered gloves could have starch in them, ang sa powder. So, they could have contaminated your specimen or contaminated the preparation of your smear, okay? So, pwede siya mo appear there. Alright, now, your starch cells, also known as starch granules, they may appear at first glance to be, again, protozoan cysts, alright? And again, still the same, the difference, they lack internal structures. And non-descript or, again, not distinctive, not definite, located inside the cell is often present and may resemble a nucleus. Further investigation, again, no karyosome, peripheral chromatin, the same internal structures found in our cysts. And again, when we stain that with iodine, your starch granules will have a blue-black, dark blue-black appearance when stained with iodine. Ayan. So again, starch granules or starch cells, usually from our powdered gloves ba or from the food that we eat. You'll encounter these starch granules, starch cells, um, again in your AUBF when you examine mga artifacts or confusers in your urine uh, specimen. Microscope examination of urine. Okay, ayan. Alright, so that's for your starch cells. So this is an appearance, your starch granules, iba color blue-black when you stain with iodine. Ayan. And as you can see, your antamoeba heart manai cyst or your What's the other name of Entamoeba Hartmanai? This is your small raised. Nako, small raised amoeba. Ayan, because it looks similar with your Entamoeba histolytica cyst, but the size is smaller. Diba? Kaya, small raised Entamoeba histolytica. Nako, sana na remember pa. The other name of Entamoeba Hartmanai. <gasps> okay, alright. Ayan. So, again, look at the appearance. Uh, again, internal structures. These are the nuclei. Alright, and mga chromatin. Uh, peripheral chromatin and for starch granules again when you stain with iodine similar with here it will appear blue black okay so you will distinguish you can distinguish na between starch granules and the cyst of an amoeba okay when we stain with iodine all right Ayan. So now we go now to blood. Uh, when we go to blood smears, now what are some artifacts in blood smears? Starting first with their clumped or fused platelets. These clumped or fused platelets may be mistaken as, of course, your malarial parasites, especially the young trophozoite or mga early ring forms. No, um, but unlike your malarial parasite, your uh, platelets may appear purple. Okay, all right. And in addition, malarial parasites possess a more definite outline than clumped or fused platelets. So here's an example. This is a clumped uh, platelet. So as you can see, the outline is not definite. Like it's irregular, diba? It's not like a perfect shape. Yeah, and so these are clumped platelets. And again, its color is about purple. This one is also another precipitate. This is an artifact during staining. Okay, all right. So that's for clumped platelets. Whereas for your malarial schizont, ayan, so as you can see, the malarial schizonts are usually inside the cell and the outline is definite. Ayan, so as you can see, it's smooth outline. <laughs> Sorry, medyo nag ano, <laughs> nilihis ang pag. Ayan, so diba definite outline, alright, compared to this, na wala talagang outline that you can see. And they are inside the cells. Whereas your clump platelets are usually outside your cells. Alright? Okay, so that's for uh, clumped or fused platelets. Okay. Next we go now to stain precipitate as I've mean as I've met as I've mean as I have mentioned, stain precipitate is brought about by the staining reagents. Okay. Um, it could have been that your staining um, reagents are not new. Okay, they are old. They could have developed mga precipitates already. Alright, so that's why it's important when you stain before you stain uh, you'll know that in your hematology pa rin. Uh, but in any staining procedure, it's best that before you start staining, alright, or before you start dipping your slides onto the stains, you first, into the stains rather, you first filter, okay? You filter the stains um, before you use the stain. Because again, to prevent these stain precipitates, okay? Alright, but and again, these stain precipitates can be mistaken as malarial parasites. But the stain precipitate is usually bluer, in color than your malarial parasite. So here's an example. This is a schizont of Plasmodium falciparum, and this is a ring form. Diba? So you can see the ring form, the color is you have again a blue, diba? blue, this blue chromatin, and of course the red uh, dot. Okay, 
di ba? So, uh, that's an appearance of a ring form. Alright? So, these are the ring forms of Plasmodium falciparum, whereas this one is your uh, stain precipitate. So, as you can see, di ba, stain precipitate, it appears bluer, di ba, darker ang pagka-blue niya compared to the uh, ring forms and your schizonts. Okay. All right, but again, uh, to prevent stain precipitates, always, always filter your stains before you start staining. Okay, all right, ayan. And uh, last, artifacts or confusers are your red blood cell abnormalities. Again, as I've mentioned, these are artifacts in parasitology, but in hematology, these are very important, <laughs> very significant, because again, they can point to a disease of the blood, a disease of your RBCs, or other diseases that could have led to these abnormalities in your RBCs, all right? So an example of that is your Howell Jolly Bodies or your Cabot's Rings. Your Howell Jolly Bodies, again, can be seen in megaloblastic anemia. Cabot's Rings also can be seen in megaloblastic anemia and even diseases all right all right and they can be present even on gem sustained blood smears when you're examining for parasitology but again in parasitology these are non-significant okay they are not really of importance kaayo but for hematology these are important okay these are really significant okay because again they can point to a lot of hematological disorders or other disorders in the body that could uh lead okay to these abnormalities in rbcs all right so again abnormalities in the rbcs differ in their malarial parasites by their different staining characteristics so here's an example of your howell jolly body so as you can see they are really clumped no small circles usually color blue uh, and it's made up of dna if i'm not mistaken no Yes, medyo, ano na akong hima? Medyo rusty na akong hima knowledge. Okay? Alright, Howell Jolly Bodies. And these are your Cabot rings. As you can see, it looks like a ring. That's why it's called Cabot rings. Because they appear um, like a ring. Okay? Cabot rings. And of course, in comparison, these are your Plasmodium falciparum rings. As you can see again, color blue chromatin and a red uh, dot. Diba? Usually, that's early trophozoid forms, the ring forms. Diba? Alright, so that's the... Um, uh, how to distinguish okay again rbc abnormalities in parasitology are of no importance most of the time again not so much but for hematology very very important again because they could point to a lot of diseases all right ayan so that's for rbc abnormalities all right now we go on to some other artifacts uh, most of these are from cdc centers for disease control and prevention uh, website uh usually coming from again stool samples and <clears throat> your blood sample so starting first with these one again yeast cells stain in iodine and a spore of a morel mushroom okay so again as you can see the yeasts the internal structure is not that definite you cannot really see like a nucleus a karyosomba all right so that's a yeast cell again seen in iodine and this one is a spore of a morel mushroom again as you can see it looks like a um uh Enterobius vermicularis egg, diba. But again, always recall that for Enterobius vermicularis egg, it's much bigger than this, and uh, it's flattened. D. So para siyang protrude, and then there is really a flattened side. Ganern. Okay, so that's the egg of a Enterobius vermicularis, diba. Flattened D, D shaped, D shaped egg. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Next, we go now to um, this one is a pollen grain. As you can see, it looks like an Ascaris lumbricoides corticated fertilized egg. But as you can see, the outer um, uh, outline of your pollen, it's sharp. Okay. Now, for your Ascaris fertilized, uh, corticated, it's quite smooth ang outer niya. All right. Okay. So, but for pollen, again, the outer uh, outline is quite sharp. May mga spike okay or spiny stuff okay that's again a, an, an example of another pollen grain and this one is also again another pollen grain but it may look like a clonorchis egg okay <laughs> all right uh, yeah but again for clonorchis eggs just look at the internal structures okay they may be there may be a developing miracidium there okay but again for pollen grain um the internal structure is not that definite Okay, but it really looks like a clonorchis egg, diba? All right, ayan. And for clonorchis eggs, again, the operculum, ayan, the operculum is quite, uh, mas maklaro pa. Okay, here. Okay, uh, for clonorchis eggs, the operculum at the top is much clearer. Okay, all right, ayan, that's for pollen greens. Okay, next we go now to here, an unidentified object according to UFO Danish. <laughs> gawa gawa na mga Illuminati. <laughs> Okay, so this is from CDC, again, unidentified object, but it may look like an Hymenolepis egg, especially Hymenolepis de minuta, because there are no polar filaments. But as you can see, the bipolar thickenings no, are absent, and it's quite irregular in shape then. So it's not 
uh, Hymenolepis. Okay, it's an identified object. Could be um, from plant, siguro, or from the food that the patient has eaten. Okay, all right. Ayan. And lastly, ayan lumabas sa boards. Lumabas sa inyong moving exam practicals. Yes, this is a plant material. It may look like um, a parasitic egg, no? Could be Ascaris gani or whatever. But this is a plant material. Yes. So the one in your <laughs> in your practicals that was a trick question. It was an artifact. So if you left it blank ba or you did not put any answer or you put lang NA or none of none or cannot be answered whatever, then you're correct because again this is an artifact. Okay, it does not have an infective stage, it does not have a mode of transmission, it does not have a common name, it doesn't even have a name. <laughs> it has a name palak, plant material, but it does not have a common name, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so plant material, yes. Okay, again, brought about by the food that the person has eaten or contamination ba. Alright, again. Next we go now to unidentified object parin, <laughs> according to CDC. So uh, yeah, I don't know what's this. Parang again, maybe contaminants um could be yeast. Uh, or not, not really yeasts, but maybe an initial just contaminants brought about by the container, ba, by the gloves or the slide, whatever. Okay, and this one, these are diatoms. Okay, diatoms are a type of algae. Okay, algae, A L G A E, algae, algae. So I've I've searched the reason why does diatoms or why do diatoms appear in stool. So I thought. Uh, it could be that um, water contamination, no? Water contamination in your stool sample or, um, yeah, sewage contamination ba in your stool sample. So these are diatoms. These are algae. Okay, that is found in the environment. Okay, all right. So they do not point to a parasite. All right, okay. Next, we go now to here. This is a mite egg. Ayan. So as you can see, it looks similar talaga with your hookworm egg. Okay, so um, how do I, how, according to CDC, there is leg buds here leg buds i don't know what what that meant but as you can see uh the blastomeres are quite uh not uh seen here diba? it's like a compact mass but for hookworm egg diba, as you can see there are divisions that you can see uh there are lobes inside that you can see for a hookworm egg all right but again if i uh, if i didn't know no i could really think that this is a hookworm egg it looks like a hookworm egg talaga but this is a mite egg so contamination pa from the environment okay ayan and last uh, next pa pala is for para, uh, for the blood sample so this is an example of a platelet really big platelet so as you can see by it can look like a trypomastigote <laughs> of the cruzy but always take note of the undulating membrane of your trypomastigote and aside from that the kinetoplast the big circle here kinetoplast diba it's absent so this is the type of platelet. All right. Okay. And last are your this one. Again, according to CDC, unidentified siya. But it could have been fungal objects. But they resemble amastigotes of Leishmania or T. cruzi. But for Leish, uh, for amastigotes, always take note again of about the um, kinetoplast and the nucleus then. And the appearance is much uh, or the shape is much more wider than this. Okay. And much bigger. Okay, all right. And lastly, of course, is an example of a fungal paren spore of Helicosporium, which we get from the environment or from the air now. Okay, so it could have been contaminated. So your blood uh, smear could have been contaminated by this fungi from the air, Helicosporium. But it can be mistaken as a filaria, microfilarii. Now, always take note again of the microfilarii. It's a worm, diba? So it's much thicker than this. It's much wider, ang kanyahang uh, diameter. The body of the microfilaria worm is much wider okay all right and of course uh it it looks like a worm talaga okay so it's much wider than this all right so again this is a fungal spore by helicosporium a fungi that is present in air okay all right Ayan. and that's the end of your artifacts okay so Again, so those are the artifacts or confusers. So when we say again artifacts, these are structures that we can see in our stool samples that could be, uh, that could resemble a real parasite or that could resemble a parasitic form. Okay, meet pieces, trophozoid, ova, larva. All right, and it's important as medtechs, if you, especially if you are to practice in the field, you get to experience and encounter a lot of samples. So you need to be a master. Okay, you need to know uh, what are the real ones, what are the true parasitic forms and what are the 
and between or against those that are nagpapanggap lang, those that are fake. Okay. <laughs> but again, it takes practice. Ako, personally, there are still some, uh, when I examine stool, there are still some structures that I do not know. Uh, but if you do not know that, then always ask for your, <laughs> for help. No, always ask for a second opinion from your other medtech uh, co-workers, from your supervisor, chief medtech ba, so that uh, you can confirm, okay, or that they could also give their insights uh, because maybe they could have experienced or encountered that already before, you no? Know, so they already know what is that, okay? Because again, the pictures that we see in the parasites, the the ones that I'm I provided, I've provided in our handouts, they do not exactly appear the same in real specimens, okay? That's why it could be a challenge, okay? Uh, that's why uh, it could be a challenge, but it's a challenge that we are willing to take <laughs> because again, gisudlan man ato This is our job. Um, but it, uh, but you don't have to despair. You don't have to be scared because, again, through practice, through continuous um, experience and encountering these um, samples or these structures, you get to be a master of it. And you get to really know what are the true ones, the true parasitic forms, the true ones, the true parasitic forms, and those that are fake, okay? Those that are just artifacts, okay? But if you don't know, again, <laughs> when you examine a stool, <laughs> then the first thing, the the most the safest thing to do if you do not know what it is is just to label it as an artifact okay but again as i mentioned ask for help from your other co-workers your supervisor na medtech or even your chief medtech ba all right okay so basically that's all for artifacts and confusers um i hope you understood <laughs> the lesson uh, again this is just a supplementary topic it was not included in our original list of topics for parasitology lab but i felt the need i really felt the need to um include this because again this is important uh because again as i mentioned all of, of all the uh, because of what i've mentioned the ay na mga um, significance and importance of really knowing these artifacts and confusers all right there could be a lot of other artifacts or confusers pa that i have i was not able to include here uh which you will experience in practice or in internship ba? but again i just focus on your zybigna book and your cd and cdc also no website all right uh there could be a lot of other artifacts okay <laughs> all right uh but yeah that's all for this lecture i hope you understand i hope you understood and thank you so much for watching and listening if you have any questions again feel free to pm me or chat in our group chat and i'll respond as soon as i can all right so thank you so much dears and um keep safe always and have a great day god bless